You can tell I'm from the country. Johnny Cash Records, Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs Records, Country Song Roundup Magazine, and syndicated TV programs like The Porter Wagner Show filled young Marty Stewart's head with country music dreams. At age 12, Marty took a summer job going on the road with bluegrass gospel group The Sullivan Family. Upon returning to Philadelphia, Mississippi at summer's end, he knew that all he really wanted was to travel and play music. Following an invitation from bluegrass picker Roland White, Marty packed his bags and took a bus to Music City to work in Lester Flatt's Nashville Grass Band. The little bitty one there is Marty Stewart, Mississippi boy. He's 14 years old. Bluebird singing. Bluebird singing. In the Blue Ridge. In the Blue Ridge Mountains calling me back to my After Flatt's death in 1979, Marty Stewart found work backing his hero, Johnny Cash. In 1989, Stewart signed with MCA Records, leading to a series of country radio hits, including Hillbilly Rock, Burn Me Down, and Tempted. Stewart and good friend Travis Tritt launched the No Hats Tour and enjoyed hit duets including The Whiskey Ain't Working, and this one's gonna hurt you. Stewart taped a series of TV shows for the Nashville Network and invited many of his musical friends and newcomers to join the Marty Party. In 1992, Stewart realized a lifelong ambition, joining his heroes and friends as a member of the Grand Ole Opry. In 1997, Stewart married fellow Grand Ole Opry star and the Rolls Royce of country singers, Connie Smith. I just need your tender love and care. As the 90s came to a close, Marty knew he needed to take his career in a different direction, less hit-driven, more about the music and the message. I went really deep as far as I could and made this love letter to country music called The Pilgrim. It was the most critically acclaimed record I'd ever had at that time in my life. Everybody loved it except the record company. Well, there's papers in the driveway, papers in the yard, paper broke a window, he didn't throw it that hard. But it shattered like a dream down in the valley below. The fabulous superlatives. Big time, really big time show business. Yes, yes, yes. Having long been a fan of country stars who had exceptional backing bands, think Merle Haggard and the Strangers, Buck Owens and the Buckaroos, Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Three, Stewart put together a tight-knit band of musicians, dressed them in flashy stage wear, and named them the fabulous superlatives. Marty Stewart launched his late night jam in the summer of 2001. The annual event has raised money for music cares and other charitable causes. From Nashville, Tennessee, the country music capital of the world and home of the Air Castle of the South, it's time for the Marty Stewart Show. In 2008, the Marty Stewart Show debuted on RFD TV. The show was a throwback to the syndicated program Stewart had watched as a youngster back in Philadelphia, Mississippi. The weekly half-hour show featured country legends and newcomers and became must-watch viewing for traditional country fans. No longer chasing chart success, Stewart released a series of critically acclaimed albums, including Souls Chapel, Ghost Train, and Way Out West. Well, somewhere between the warning and the dying Following Johnny Cash's example, Marty champions causes and people he believes in. And in 2005, he released the album Badlands, Ballads of the Lakota, a song cycle about Native Americans. 
Recently, Stewart was a key voice in Ken Burns' epic PBS documentary, Country Music, adding stories and insight as only he could. He also served as the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum's 16th artist in residence. Marty Stewart is revered and respected. He's an evangelist who unites generations through one language we can all understand, music. His name and likeness will now reside in the hallowed rotunda as a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame.